Father, that is enough. Father, help us to realize that you are more than enough. You are more than enough. As Father God, you continue to help us through this series beyond the bill. Father, I ask that may it be a reality in our walk with you. May we truly encounter our Lord Jesus. May we truly make it all about him. May we not apologize for preaching Christ, preaching the gospel. The world needs to hear that you are more than enough. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, once again, the time, the balance of the time we have, won't you speak to our hearts? Help us to grow in you. Help us to bear fruit, fruit that will remain. And for that, we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's be seated and um, hallelujah. All right. And so, I'm going to jump you know, quite quick. Again, we are still in this book. We have a couple of weeks. Like I said, we are not going to exhaust the, the subject. Um, we will see, you know, and as we get into the new year, um, just a quick announcement. This Tuesday, uh, we thank God we're able to, um, you know, take care of the, um, the well situation. Of course, the EPA is still testing some things, but the bathrooms are, are back and running and so we are grateful for that and so tuesday we are going to be here for the last class for the ministry class someone say amen, amen. all right and so i i ask even those who normally come on sundays to be here on tuesday so we are not going to hopefully have next sunday so everybody and, and and by all intents and purposes i'm asking everyone maybe uh, uh, only by exception the one who lives in Florida, everybody else, please do everything you can to be in person. Amen. I believe the Lord wants to activate some things. So uh, that's Tuesday. Uh, please come on time so we can have enough time to do that. And then beginning in by January, we are going to open up the sign-up portal for um, those who want to start that process. All right, so those who became members, those who haven't gone through Maturity 101, please don't stop. Please sign up. You are going to be happy you did so. Someone say amen. amen. All right, so that will happen in January. Um, again, I think the rest of the stuff, we are good. Next Sunday, we are having our Christmas presentation, so our young ones are going to be here. Please, 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 please. Amen. If you don't feel like coming to hear me preach, at least come and hear uh, the little ones. They've been rehearsing for some time, right, Ebony? All right, and so they will be, Zion will be very disappointed <laughs> if you are not here to witness their uh, anointing. Amen? So that's next Sunday. I hear most of the toys have already been distributed, but if you haven't received a, your, a toy for your kid yet, by next, this Sunday, today, and next Sunday, you should be able to pick up. Um, yesterday, we picked up some bunch of toys also. Amen. I'm saying it so everybody, even me, you can get a toy. <laughs> Amen. Because there is a section of the toy. <laughs> Patience. Wait, I'm not talking to the new member. No. <laughs> no. That's my son. There's a, there's, a, there's a section where it says 12 plus. <laughs> Am I not 12 plus? Why are you looking at me funny? Plus, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12. Well, it is still plus. Okay, so so long as it's, you are not under 12, you can <laughs> you can have that <laughs> toy. So, but that's not what is written on the box. Okay. Pastor Angie says it's 12 to 18. Amen. All right. So please let's get that. And then our crossover night. Amen. Do we have that now? So crossover man is going to come down. Hallelujah. 31st, Saturday. And hey, um, I, I decided to go forth. I think this may be the first time Clotin may be hearing this. So just work with me. All right. We are going to open up this place earlier for some fun, some fellowship, you know, and some football. Okay. So those who love football, fun, fellowship. Food, fan, fellowship, football. Amen. Come and see Ohio State do what they do. I don't know. 
but but anyway um you know please come early let's just have some fun but whatever we are doing by 9 45 we are shutting everything down when we are in the sanctuary okay because we are going to praise and we are going to pray and we are going to see jesus drop not the ball uh, at 12 midnight and then uh, we'll try and close everything out so instead of having the fellowship normally we do after the crossover service we will do it before so that we can you know head home get those of you who like to sleep eight hours you can get in your eight hours sleep and then come and then the first sunday in 2023 can you believe we're talking about 2023 already awesome uh, 2023 is the first of january what a way to begin a new year all right for that i'm considering because of what happened the previous night to start service at 11 okay so we'll put it out there you know 30 minutes i don't know if it makes a difference for somebody but for some people that extra 30 minutes does good so we will you know begin service maybe around 11 and then rejoice and kick off the new year right someone say amen is that helpful okay so uh go with me to uh, the book of uh john let's go to john 15 john 15 if i miss any announcement somebody please remind me john 15 christmas day Thank you, Ms. Jalisa. So right after service, you know, in the next hour, I'll say, we'll be meeting here with every crossover youth parent. Amen. So if you have a child between the ages of 12 and 18, 19-ish, all right, please stay behind briefly. We want to have a talk because... Uh, we want to really get our crossover youth back. How many of you believe our youth need something special? All right, so we really want to partner with our parents first. I'm hoping that maybe next week uh, we have some time. I want to just meet with the, the youth. Amen. So the youth, please come back next week without your parents. I want to hear also from you. I don't want you to feel like we are putting something down your throat. I want the youth to own their time. Someone say amen. So, but today after service, I want to meet with the parents, and then hopefully next week we can meet with just the youth. So, please, parents, make sure your youth are in service next Sunday, so I can just have a, a conversation with them. Amen. Thank you for that. All right, we've been talking about beyond the veil, talking about intimacy with God. This is a blessing. Today, I might need my help. Ah, my helpers, if they need a chair, fine. But um, Josh, uh, Pastor Edwin, and uh, Larry, please uh, come. Let's see what we can do here today in the name of Jesus. I feel like just taking my time and breaking forth. Again, if you need chair or you can sit on the, on the platform, you can hang with me for just a little bit. So let's, let's just remember, Pastor Edwin, you are something else. <laughs> Amen. You, you, you want to do the same? You good? Okay. All right. All right, so this is the way. <laughs> He's been truthful. <laughs> the truth and the life. Remember that this veil has been torn. So one of these days, I might just let him go because we don't want anything separating us from here today. Are you following me? And so we have been talking about the tabernacle of Moses for the sake of time. Please get the message. Go uh, uh, get the past messages so you can catch up with us. We are saying that the outer court, before you enter the tabernacle, you have a gate that brings you into the outer court. And then you have a door that then brings you into what we call the holy place. And so originally, when you read the book of Exodus, uh, really the uh, tabernacle was supposed to be demarcated in two parts. All right, follow me, not three. Okay, now, the second part was divided by a veil. The fact that it's a veil tells you that it was not supposed to be permanent. Oh, Larry, stop breaking my stuff. You are the life, so anyway. So you have to remember, this, this is a, a gate, all right? So that, that is a hard. You don't do away with that. This was a door. You can see that. It, you, you couldn't do away with that. This was a veil. So technically, this was supposed to be one area. Because the activity that happens here after you encounter here was supposed to empower you to encounter the Father. However, 
the people decided that they will put a separation, a veil between them and the Father. Am I making sense? I told you also that this in, is, is in a way uh, akin to your who you are. All right? We normally say that we are a three-part being, and we are. However, the truth is, the second, the, the, the second and third part of your being that uh, we, we call, God intends it to be so fused that you can't tell the difference. And that is why up till today, there, there, there is a little, I won't say, I won't use the word confusion per se, but there is always kind of the tension between when people are reading the Bible, when you see the word heart. You know, some people say, oh, that's my, that's the spirit. Some people say, that's the soul. See, because in that area of your spirit and soul, it was supposed to be one. But because of the fall, the spirit component of you died. So the soul took over. But without the spirit, the soul cannot really contact the spirit. God is spirit. So the soul began to do its own thing. The soul had a mind of its own. Because your soul is made up of your mind, will, emotion. But that was supposed to be subjected to your spirit which was connected to his spirit make sense so now once you become born again your spirit is what is coming alive now your spirit is trying to call your soul back in alignment and your soul says uh -uh, i've been enjoying my whole time leave me alone can i be honest with you vulnerable you know, when, when you become more sensitive to God, I have seen how my soul fights me. And I'm like, my soul, why don't you love me? I'm serious. Because suddenly, thoughts that I'm like, that's not me. I don't want it. See, but the soul will make you think some way. Your soul, unregenerated. Your soul, sinful, flesh fight you. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says the soul and the spirit fight so that you will not do what you will. You want to. But there is something. And it's almost like, I mean, I'm like, I, I, I thought we are doing this thing together. And you are pulling me. You are, you are suggesting things and I know it's not good for me. And yet you want me to have it. Paul begins to talk to you about that in Romans 7. Inside, he said, inside me there is uh, something working against me. Your greatest enemy is not the devil. You always look at him in the morning. Are you following me? The soul. The mind. Because it has been disconnected from the spirit. That is why you may think that God wants to separate your spirit from your soul. The only reason you want to separate it is so that you will know what is him and what is you. And the only instrument that can discern that is the word. So it says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword cutting between the ascender of soul and spirit and is a designer of the thoughts and the intentions of man only the word can tell you whether it is your mind or it is his mind but once you get to a place of maturity where the mind is fully conformed and fully submitted to your spirit that is conformed and submitted to his spirit, you are one. There's no more veil because the veil is the flesh. Because now he becomes the way to the truth that brings you life. He's the way, the truth and life. But the way he showed me, it's like those three are important. Because it is a secret. You cannot just jump and come and encounter the truth. That is why 
anything that you are encountering spirit wise that is not routed through Jesus the Christ is idolatry demonic it cannot be truth because the only way to the truth is him and until you have the truth you can't experience life someone say life are you following me so so a time has to come no wonder after you get saved the first thing he then tells you hallelujah i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you do what present your body the way huh present your body unto him as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable or acceptable unto him which is your reasonable service then number two do not be conformed to the world system but be transformed how you better didn't talk about your spirit see because he's talking to believers your spirit is already transformed your spirit is already born again your spirit is already in tune with him but now he needs your mind to conform to your spirit that is why some of us we are suffering we, we, it's almost that like we can't be happy because Paul said it when I want to do good my spirit says yes my soul says no it's boring am I, to, am I just see that is why repentance is important and so as I keep on renewing my mind through the word my mind begins to conform with my spirit and therefore there is joy there is harmony are you listening to me a time has to come where Bible says sin is no longer uh, uh, domineering your body or your flesh because your mind and your spirit are working hand in hand and your body will only do what your mind tells it to do your body is a slave therefore the most Oh, Lord help me. The most important part of your being is your soul. Some say, oh, it's my spirit. No. It's your soul. Whoever has your soul has your destiny. Do you hear what I said? See, because some people, once they become born again, God has your spirit. But does he have your soul yet? You will, die, you will go to heaven, but you can suffer and not fulfill your destiny on earth. Are you following me? See, because what we see, your body is what is going to fulfill what God wants you to fulfill. But your body will only do what your soul tells it to do, not what your spirit tells it to do. <laughs> and so, whoever has your soul, therefore has your body. Am I talking to anybody? That is why you have to watch your soul. That is why your soul has to come in subjection to your spirit, which is under God. See, the, the devil, yes, he has lost you. Your spirit is now born again. But if he can, he can bypass your spirit and attack your soul. Listen to me. Your, the devil still has access to your mind, right? True? And so, he, he, yes, he, he, he's lost your spirit. But the person who is still not submitted and uh, subjected their soul to their spirit man, which is com conformed to God, is in this outer court. The devil still has free reign in your life. You are born again, and yet you look like everybody else. Am I helping anybody? That is why God says, Receive the word of God, James chapter 1. Receive the word of God with meekness. That is able to save your soul. He's talking to believers, people of God. See, those of you who have not gone through maturity class and all that, we, we teach this. To let you understand the separation between spirit, soul, and body. So you are born again. Your spirit is born again. But your soul also needs to be born again. Then if someone says, your soul born again. You receive the word with meekness, able to save your soul, so that a day will come, and I pray this often, and I live it as often as I can, where the Bible says, my, it says, my ways are your ways. My thoughts become your thoughts. Therefore, you will only go. 
And you see, when that happens, living right is not difficult. Because that's what you want to do anyway. Are you following what I'm saying? That is where you can boldly say, and Jesus, uh, the, uh, John said, his, his commandments are not burdensome. Some of us have read that scripture and say, Holy Ghost, you are a liar. Because some of us, I'm, I'm not trying to downplay because we have all been there. Some of us, we have gotten to the place where the commandments of God are burdensome. Be honest. If you are still there, it means you are still fighting in the outer court. Your soul has to shift. Someone say, Lord, help my soul. So anyway, that is what needs to happen. So we talked about this uh, uh, dynamic and we are growing. So the first part we talked about is time to grow. And so once you encounter the way, you are a child, you are in here, you are dealing with sin, you are overcoming sin. Hallelujah. And then you encounter the truth. Bible says sanctify them by the truth. And then the, to, to become young men, First John, we dealt with that. You, you become, uh, it says you are strong. You have the word of God inside you. You overcome the devil. You are growing. And then once you pass through the life uh, he says fathers I write to you because you have known him who is from the beginning now we are talking about the fact that it is also time for us to be fruitful because with each level of growth you have to be fruitful someone say I have to be fruitful and so last week I just want to do a quick uh, recap last week we dealt with the first fruit that we need to bear it is called the fruit of what repentance oh boy and have I been have I been dealt with this week oh and still dealing with and it's a good thing so let me just read quickly uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, shift into a, a, a new gear and uh, let's see oh glory to God Emmanuel what time do I have you will determine what time we leave today yeah but, but make sure you are in the spirit 15 minutes okay we'll see we shall see amen 15 minutes. I like that. So in 15 minutes, 5 minutes for the way, 5 minutes for the truth, 5. Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Give me John 15. Amen. God is good. Amen. John 15. I may not be able to do as much as we want to, but it'll be good. Alright, so Jesus is speaking. Again, we are staying here for some time. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear much more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Hmm. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, hear me, oh God, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, I love the scripture, you can do nothing. One time I read the scripture and I said, no, it's not making sense because there are some things that I can do without Jesus. Right? You can do some things without Jesus. So does it make this scripture false? No. Remember, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me just so I know stay there. What Jesus is saying is that anything that you can do or you do apart from him is nothing. So it's not that you can't do. I mean, because, see, we do some stuff. I mean, we try to do church without Jesus. In many places, we do church without Jesus. We sing without Jesus. In fact, there are some people who heal without Jesus. You can do church. I mean, Jesus talked to a church. I'm outside knocking. They were having church service. Laodicean church. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. He wasn't talking to unbelievers. See, we use that scripture to preach to unbelievers. We are preaching to unbelievers. You see, if you give, I'm not saying you can't use it, but in context, it wasn't for unbelievers. The unbeliever already knows Jesus is outside, you know. <laughs> It was for the church. It says, I write to you, Laodicean church. So, so, and so, and so. It says, but repent. It says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anybody is inside and hears me and opens the door, I will come in and dine with them. It is the church. They were having church and Jesus was outside wanting to come in. 
Amen. So do I, do I do something? See, but what he's saying is, anything that you do apart from me, nothing. That is serious. So he can tell you boldly. Some will come to me on the last day. He said, I healed in your name. I preached. That's something. But I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. They were healing the sick and they were doing iniquity. Folks, it's not the good you do. It is the source of the good you do. The motive of the soul, of the of the good you do. It's not just doing something good. It is doing something right. And the only thing you do right is when you do it with him, in him, and through him. So he can say, well done. Good and faithful. Don't forget the faithful part. Because the faithful part is what qualifies you. That means you did exactly what I told you to do. And you did it with my approval. Someone say amen. So, so again, I, I read that and it, it shook me. I'm like, hey, that means I have to be careful what I am doing. Because if it's apart from him, he will say zero, nothing. Someone say amen. amen. So over here we see three levels of fruit. In fact, there, there, there is four, but the first one doesn't count because he says, the one that does not bear fruit, I cut him off. But the one that does bear fruit, I prune so it will bear more fruit. Then he says, when you abide in me, he who abides in me, and I in him, and abides in my word, they are the one who will bear what? Much fruit. So fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. And uh, based on the book, again, I'm not saying this is doctrine and this is the revelation, this is the revelation the Lord gave me. In everything God does, he does mostly in threes. So we talked about the fruit is akin to the outer court. Where we come in, we have passed the way. And the way is salvation. The way is Jesus receiving him as Lord and Savior. And the way you receive Jesus is because of your sins, right? And so you need to repent. Turn to somebody say repent. We said repentance is a good word. It means come back to the top. Are you listening to me? Repentance is a good thing. People say, oh, in the New Testament, we don't need to repent. The devil is a liar. All over the New Testament, there is repentance. Without repentance, there's no remission of sin. Because repentance introduces you to the blood and into forgiveness. And if you are not forgiven, you cannot be saved. And if you don't repent, you cannot be forgiven. That is why one of the most foundational doctrines of the, of the church in Hebrews chapter 6, which we teach during the discipleship class, there are six doctrines that every believer ought to be conversant with. The first one it says is the word repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Paul said that in Acts, he said God in, 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 in times when uh, we were ignorant, the Bible says he closed his eyes, he blinked. But now, he calls everyone onto what? Repentance. Repentance is the doorway to the kingdom. But I told you, repentance is not just an event. It's a process. So, quickly, we said three reasons why we have to repent. Please listen to it. I felt the Holy Ghost wanted me to say it because I kind of rushed it. Number one, you need to repent because you have missed the mark. Sin is missing the mark. Three kinds of mark. Number one, Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So we said, the reason why we repent, meaning changing of mind, is because we need to encounter the kingdom. We have fallen short of the kingdom. Oh, I don't have time. One of these days we'll go and teach on the kingdom again. The kingdom, the, 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 the church is not a religious institution. The church is a nation. The word church appears one time in the Gospels and it was not a religious term. It was a kingdom term. It was God calling legislators out. Ecclesia. It's not religion. It's a kingdom. Jesus didn't bring a religious movement. That is why the people who fought him the hardest were the religious people. Religion kills people, folks. Get out of religion and get into the kingdom. Am I helping anybody? I feel passionate about this today. 
and so and so he said repent change your mind for the kingdom of god is at hand that means that you have missed the mark of the kingdom number one and when the kingdom comes it comes with power it comes with blessing number two then he says in romans 3 23 for all have sinned and fallen short of what church the glory so we have missed the glory mark anybody want the glory so if you are falling short from the glory how do i get back the glory repent because the glory is here and you are here to go back to the top repent change your mind but the most important aspect that covers both is because bible says in the book of romans 8 verse 29 please write that down I didn't go there bible says after all is said and done the goal of god is that we will come to the confirmation of the image of jesus christ until you look exactly like jesus you need to repent jesus is the mark romans 8 29 we have missed the mark of jesus so, so I wrote even on Facebook, the more you encounter Jesus, the, re, the more you realize you are not like him. That is why I'm not comparing myself to you. The more I see him, the more I see how far I am, the more I repent so I can become more like him. Someone say amen. That's the three reasons. All right. Then in Luke chapter 15, we discuss the process by uh, what repent. What is uh, how do we repent? Number one, what do we say? How do we repent? Repentance is not an event. Again, it is a process. The first thing you do in repentance, looking at the uh, prodigal son, Bible says he came to himself, and so you need to have conviction or an awareness. Someone say an awareness. So I need to realize I'm going the wrong way. I'm thinking the wrong way. You know, and, and somebody sent me a message, uh, you know, last week. It blessed them. They were going through a few things. And I said, oh, daddy, I'm, I'm so grateful for what you shared because, you know, uh, I realized that repentance is not just about sin. It's an attitude. It's, oh, thank you. Because now I can change my mind concerning my marriage. And so don't wait I'm not saying you should do this, but it's not, don't wait till, oh, I fornicate, I need to repent. No, you, Bible says fornication even shouldn't be mentioned amongst us. Are you listening to me? It's not the fruit of the sin. In fact, it is the attitude of sin. Why I sin? That I repent from, so I don't sin. So it's an attitude, it's a change, it's a shift of the mindset. Ah, oh, Shabbat. Glory to God. Somebody has to repent. Oh, I heard this. Somebody has to repent from a poverty mentality. That's a mentality. Oh, one of these will be preaching about some things. You need to have a superior mindset. It's a change of mind. Are you following me? All right. So I come an awareness. Then the awareness comes through the preaching of the word. And then the Holy Ghost brings that. You, you realize that where I am is not where I'm supposed to be. Okay, I'm aware. What do I do next? I make a quality decision. I, he said, I will arise. Someone said, I will arise. Some of us have been saying, I will arise for 10 years. And we are still there. So it's not, you see, you are not done yet. Some of us, oh, I am sincere. God knows my heart. I know he knows your heart. But then something has to happen. So I am aware. I say, I will arise. I make a quality decision. And then I take the action. I take some steps. Trust me, God will not allow you to take all the steps. He will come and meet you. But sometimes he waits to see what you are going to do next. Someone say amen. So I had to give you that. Because the repentance continues. Oh man. It's been hitting. And the enemy sometimes will try to take advantage. Oh I hear you Lord. So let me encourage you. This process doesn't have to come with condemnation. Don't repent because you are guilty. Repent because it is necessary. Don't wait till the devil even attacks you before you repent. See, because repentance is your journey to the top. Are you following me? So, so it, the Holy Ghost will never condemn you. He will convict you and there's a difference. And we all face it sometimes. I, I've told you this before. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, I'm like, man, it feels like I've been, you know, the devil tries to accuse you. So it's not about condemnation or guilt. Bible says godly sorrow is what God is looking for. Not worldly sorrow. Some of us repent only because we have been caught. Or we are afraid of the consequence. Someone say, Amen. Alright, so don't let uh, condemnation into the picture. Alright, hallelujah. Uh, 
Iman, I think I have two minutes left. Eh? Okay. Can you give me five more minutes? <laughs> I'm, teasing, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Are we okay? Are we okay? Again, I won't hold you. No. I just want to show you something in John 15. Can we go back to John 15? All right. So now we have come across from the fruit of repentance. What is the next fruit? Again, the details are in the book. Once you encounter Jesus, the truth. Remember, the truth allows you to then go to an area where there are two activities, two furnitures. Remember what we talked about, the menorah, the light, that represents the spirit of God. And then the table of showbread, that represents the what? The word of God. And these two, um, these two elements are responsible for truth in your life. You cannot have the fullness of truth outside of these two agencies. Write it down and remember that. You cannot only get truth by just reading the word. You need both the word and the spirit working together to introduce truth to you that is why after you are born again i won't have time to go into it but next day we'll do more you also need to be baptized in the holy ghost you also cannot just pray in tongues and tongues and tongues and not read the bible and say holy ghost lead me the only thing the holy ghost has to lead you is the word jesus says he will not speak anything on himself but what he hears from me he will speak and jesus has spoken it is in the word the holy ghost will never tell you something that contradicts the word of god but how will you know if you don't know the word so the devil also can come and talk to you he is also a spirit but he is not holy am i helping anybody don't just settle for the Logos. The Logos plus the Spirit turns it to Rhema that gives you power to fulfill the word. So he says, it is the Spirit of truth and then the word of truth. Both of them. And I hear my heart. That is also why the Bible says, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Your spirit and your word comfort me. It takes the truth. But you first have to encounter the truth. Are you listening to me? You are sanctified by the truth. Thy word is truth. The spirit helps you to be what? Sanctified. Okay. And so once I come in here, I also want you to remember that once you are in this area of the outer court, you are a child and you approach this truth. I told you in the tabernacle, only the priests were allowed beyond this side. Oh, we have time. The priests brought the blood. In this area, only priests activity see your priesthood calling is enhanced and exhibited after you have encountered the truth oh i know that is gone but let me say this to you don't try to serve out of the outer court see because in the outer court you are still in your flesh so if you try to serve out of your flesh you will hurt people because you are in your flesh. And my Bible says there's nothing good in my flesh. There's nothing good in my flesh. So I may have good intentions. So let me be bold so that we check ourselves. Anytime there is church heads, people operated in the flesh. The church is quiet. There's no way that you can be operating fully here and hurt people. Because over here you are operating in the spirit and the word it will only bless you are you following me see because here you are not in your priestly garment if you are in your priestly garment it still means that you have not been sanctified and i wrote in my book that priests had to be sanctified if they were not sanctified they were not they were not allowed near the sacrifice read in the book of chronicles bible says when the, when when revival hit they were trying to bring a lot of sacrifices but for a long time they had not made any sacrifice king asa hallelujah brought a whole lot of lambs and they were trying to kill the lambs they were flaying the lambs and bible says there was not enough priests who had been sanctified so they had to go get the levites to help them and the bible says the levites had prepared their hearts better than the priests 
Folks, we need some sanctified priests back in the house of God. I don't just want a priest. I want a sanctified priest. Oh, I wish I can talk to you about the priesthood of Zadok. The Zadok priesthood were another level of priests. They have sanctified themselves. They have prepared themselves. And Jesus, uh, God said, they are the ones that I will bring into my sanctuary. And they are the ones who are going to encounter me. And I'm going to use them to bless the people. The people, listen to me, when people are hurt in church, it's because we have pastors, uh, we have leaders who are trying to lead out of the outer court. Uh, they are in their flesh up flesh on flesh is only going to be get hurt but if you advance and you allow the holy ghost to sanctify you you allow the word to sanctify you you allow the truth to come forth and you begin to minister to people bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free it is only truth that will set free but the careers of truth are sanctified people who can set people free can i hear an amen? amen so i just want to remain here a minister and so the priests had to sanctify themselves come over here and then they were doing their priestly activity and therefore the fruit they bear over here is called the fruit of ministry go back to john 15. so jesus says if you abide in me go with me back to john chapter 15 real quick let me show you something uh, uh, if anyone go to verse one two three I am the true vine. My father is the uh, vine dresser. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that does bear fruit, he does what? He prunes that he may bear more fruit. As I'm bearing the fruit of repentance, I'm bearing fruit. That is why some of you have been experiencing some pruning. Pruning ain't pleasant, but it is necessary. Oh, I've been feeling some cuts. Ouch! But it's good for you. But check this out. The word prune is the uh, uh, Greek word that also you can substitute for clean or sanctified. So it says, every branch in me that is bearing fruit, fruit of repentance, I even sanctify more. Because now they encounter the truth. So that it will bear more fruit. The fruit of their ministry. Their activity. The ministry I'm talking about is not you preaching. It's everything you are doing in life. Your marriage is your ministry. Your work is your ministry. And you are going to bear fruit. God only has people bearing fruit. He wants you to increase. He wants you to abound. But the more you are abounding, how many of you have seen a, a crazy bush? It will kill itself. But he comes as, a, as the vine dresser and he begins to what? He begins to cut some things so that you will even bear much fruit. Folks, embrace the pr pruning process. Yes. But this is where I want to help somebody. Look at this. Every branch in me, it says he prunes that it may bear more fruit. How does God prune you? Or what instrument does he use? Are you ready? Because I'm about to crucify some devils. Lying to the people of God. Look at the next verse. Then maybe we have to already you are clean because of because of the word that i have spoken you won't hear the word unless you are here this is the activity of the word but look at this already you are clean that word clean is the same word he used for prune so let me help somebody God does not use sickness to prune you. God does not use poverty to clean you. He only has one thing. The word. By the washing of water. By the word. You see what religion does to people? People are sick and say, God is teaching me a lesson. Oh, God is using this sickness. Oh, he's pruning me. What a wicked father. You think I'm going to put sickness on this my son just to teach him a lesson? I'm going to give him cancer so that he will learn something? The only thing he will learn from cancer is that cancer kills. Cancer doesn't draw me to God. Now, listen to me. I'm not saying that God will not and cannot use 
even the things that the devil brings to you because he works all things together for his good but he does not he is better than that folks is he such a is he such a weak and wicked god that he doesn't have any other uh, uh, tool but to give you what belongs to the devil it is the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, listen to me, if you will submit yourself to my word, you don't have to suffer. But if you refuse my word, you are already under condemnation. Are you following me? See, so, so if you don't allow the word to prune you, then circumstances will do it. But he doesn't do that. See, because if you go away from his way, and then you are being beaten by circumstances, and then you call to him, guess where he will direct you to? Back to the word. You will go back to class one. He won't just deliver you from the circumstance and say, okay, I did that to teach you a lesson. No, he will say, if you return to me, and you return to my word, my word will begin to renew your mind so you have the upper hand whereas you were under the circumstance now you are going to take the word and say devil once i was blind but now i see it get away from me devil ah, cancer is not from god sickness is not from god poverty is not from god i am born again i am a king's kid what are you doing i begin to become a priest and a king and i tell the devil to get out of my children's life someone shout amen. amen so 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 i uh, you see but again it doesn't make it easy how many of you has the word come to you and you are like my god the word is a sharp sword so i'm not saying it makes it easy but he uses the word oh uh, don't you love the word ah the more you stay in the word the more listen to me so sometimes all i pray is god make me willing to be willing well, I know you all are, uh, are, are virtuous and uh, I know you all, you all got it going. But some of us, uh, uh, oh, we can, sometimes uh, we still got that rebel in us trying to, you know, trying to have it our way. I said, God, please, I want to be willing. Uh, but you got to help me to be willing to be willing so I can be willing. And then I just come into the presence of God. I talk them tongues. I read the word. But by the time I realize I am rising up with power. Oh, I love this God. Because he will empower you to overcome. And after you overcome, he will say, here go my son. Look at my son go up. Meanwhile, I say, I didn't do nothing. Oh, yes, you did something. What did you do? Submit yourself unto me. Then you can resist the devil. Ah, if you submit yourself to the word, you submit yourself to the spirit i come to sell somebody you will begin to see hallelujah fruit begin to come forth out of your life if you attach yourself and stay connected to the vine you don't have to struggle to bear fruit because every vine every branch that stays connected will automatically bear fruit before you realize here goes some fruit up here comes some fruit people say where did that come from oh all i did was stay connected turn to somebody say stay connected up come on stay connected up stay attached up oh i feel the devil trying to disconnect you up all the effort you have to put in life up is hold on to jesus yeah, amen. if you can do that you are going to be okay if all you can do is hold on to the word all you can do oh i heard oh what was his name up Captain Percy used to say when he was growing up, hallelujah, as a child, he would go see a, a grandmother who knew God, and the grandmother would ask him, Captain, how are you doing? Say, Mama, I'm doing all right. He said, keep on holding on, little child. And he would give him 25 cents. And the next time he'll come, keep on holding on, child. Oh, give him 50 cents. And he says he, she never went above 50 cents. Hallelujah. But I I show somebody keep on holding on up hold on to the word up hold on to the spirit up hold on to prayer up hold on up hey, it may not happen tomorrow but as surely as I stand here and as surely as the word says up if you stay connected up allow the word to clean you allow the word to prune you allow the word to wash you up trust me when I say up you will just see fruit up begin to happen to you up what is the fruit up it is everything Evidence all over you and so the evidence 
we need to bear. No, I'm done. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. No, 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 I'm done. Stand on your feet. Trudy, help me. I know I'm leaving, I'm leaving us hanging. I don't know where we will go next week, but I think I'm done. Somebody, hallelujah, begin to pray. Hallelujah, glory to God. And begin to say, Father, because I feel like uh, this week you are about to hear and go into another realm. Uh, somebody's going to go and say, uh-uh, this sickness is not from God. I don't care what they said to you. I don't care what they said to you. God will not use a bad situation just to clean you up. That will happen to you if you refuse the word. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Ah! I feel like I'm on top of the world because I repent. I feel like I'm about to bear some fruit. I believe God for he said glory to God in Psalm 1. I love that Psalm so much. He said blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit. Hallelujah. When you are walking you will eventually stand. When you keep on standing for a while you get comfortable and you are going to sit up with the scornful up. but that is not your story you are going to deny up. somebody is about to delete some relationships up. you are about to delete some things up because you want the word up. he said glory to God up. but his delight up, is in the word of God up. oh I challenge somebody up. sit with the word today up. sit with the word this week up. let the Holy Ghost up, begin to wash your mind up, and introduce the word up. in fact I give you an assignment as much as you can this week spend some time in the book of Psalm 119 it is about 130 verses take a few verses each of this day this week and begin to understand what Akabah David oh I love him it was all about the activity of the word until one time David said how can a young man hallelujah walk upright before God by hiding your word in my heart up your word have i hidden in my heart up joshua up. get the word in your heart up don't allow anything outside you up. just keep getting the word up imbibe the word up receive the word up he said how can a young man up hallelujah keep himself upright up by getting the word inside him up your word up have i hidden in my heart up that i may not sin up against you up for your word up is a lamp unto my feet up and a light unto my path up sustain me by the word of god up i introduce you up to a system of victory up that no devil can overcome up get the word in all your getting up get understanding the spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel the spirit of wisdom the spirit of knowledge the spirit of the fear of the lord up and god will give you victory clap your hands and shout hands he said his delight is in the law of god in it he meditates meditate hey i still see some negativity forget meditate the more you meditate the more your spirit is cleansing your mind before you realize it your meditation will become manifestation what you meditate at, you will begin to magnify what is magnified will begin to manifest up if you meditate negativity you will magnify negativity and you will manifest negativity but if you meditate up on the goodness of god and what he has done for me he the god of heaven will become magnified and you will begin to manifest up joy manifest peace up he says he meditates up day and night up he said up he will bear his fruit up you, you, you see that he will bear his fruit up in his season his leaves will not wither whatsoever he does up i don't care what it is up whatever your hand will find to do up suddenly there's fruit up whatever you do up it will prosper up. not because you went to school but because you meditate you feel up yourself up in the truth of god up. i prophesy to somebody this is the week of meditation this is the week of manifestation this is the week of you will bear fruit 
lift up your hands everywhere oh thank you daddy and so father oh lady i'm i'm so i'm so happy i'm there mike play gyra again and let's go home i'm so full in the name of jesus and so father i release your people into a season of fruitfulness and father you will encounter them as the truth as they spend time with you holy spirit as they spend time in the word i pray god you said intimacy is the connection to fruitfulness father help us with our intimacy with you let us see you as gyra let us see you as supplier let us see you as father oh father forgive us for attributing to you what the devil does father forgive us for you said oh god if you evil fathers know how to give good gifts to your children how much more your heavenly father will give you good gifts every good and perfect gift comes from above sickness is not from god poverty is not from god he will use his word to cleanse you and so may the lord bless and keep you the lord sustain you by his word the lord promote you by his word the lord heal you by his word the lord restore you by his word the lord prune you by his word the lord make you to manifest fruit by his word in the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name.